being a part of the video so um like we're gonna have her back but not today today is not the day. it's okay i respect your boundaries thanks <laughs> you great segue claire now into the topic of video. boundaries again please use that video. okay she wants me to use that video so i'm going to um okay so welcome back to doc holly talks and i swear to god i'm still playing the video claire okay, bye. bye um and today's topic is a follow-up about the topic of boundaries. And what I wanted to do was introduce an analogy that is really useful uh, for most of my clients and myself to think about boundaries. And that is the analogy of a house. If you think about the fact that each of us has a psychological house that we live in, we have uh, various parts of ourselves, which would be similar to various rooms in our houses. And we have walls and doors and windows and if we lived in a house that was like a tent which had very weak boundaries very weak walls and roof then we would not be very safe we would not um, be very protected from the elements from it being knocked down or uh, you know basically being homeless is not a safe thing so that is the same if we do not have any boundaries in our life but the exact opposite would be if we have such rigid and firm boundaries that we lived in, say, a uh, castle with a wall that has no windows and, you know, up on the parapets we've got archers waiting to attack any people that come our way. We have a moat and a drawbridge. Uh, it might be very hard for someone to come into our space, understand us, connect with us, relate to us. And we might feel very lonely in that castle with very rigid walls. So the goal is to have or to live in a house that has firm and strong boundaries that can protect us and keep us safe, but also has flexibility where we can come and go. We can stay safe within our walls, but we can also go outside of our walls and connect with other people. We can also allow other people in. Uh, we can also see and other people can see into us through windows. So you can think about the doors and windows as opportunities for transparency, for authenticity, for um, connection, being open, being vulnerable. And there are all different types of vulnerability, right? So having screens and sheer curtains on our windows is a way for people to know something a little bit about us without actually having to let them in. We might also have people who want to get to know us, want to have a relationship with us. They may come to our door, they may knock on the door, they may say, can I enter? And you have the right, this is an example of our boundary conversation, we have the right to say, come on in, I, I welcome you, I let you into my living room. Uh, for example, a living room is the place in our home where we might be most likely to uh, be comfortable having guests, but we wouldn't necessarily invite that person into our bedroom. That is a much uh, more intimate and personal level of allowing someone in. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily let them into our basement. We might have things in our basement that we don't want to show anyone. We shouldn't have to show anyone. So thinking about the levels of intimacy, levels of vulnerability that we can have, you can uh, connect that to the various levels of your house, the various rooms of your house that you might feel comfortable letting people in. An example of uh, when we talked about bound, uh, boundary violations yesterday, a good way to think about boundary violations in this situation, um, if you, if someone knocked on your door and you said, I'm sorry, but I am not feeling visitors today, so no, I am not going to let you in and that person decides to bust down your door and come into your house anyway, that is a very obvious boundary violation. That's, uh, you know, when an example of that in your real life would be if someone um, 
said, I want to talk about this problem right now. And you say, you know, I'm not feeling good right now. I'm not, I, I don't feel well, or I'm flooded with emotion. This isn't the best time for me to be talking about this, or I don't feel safe. I need some space. And this person says, no, we're going to talk about it now. They may stand over you. They may corner you in the room, be very aggressive toward you. I think that's a good sort of analogy to a boundary violation that's similar to someone busting your door down and forcing their way into your space without your permission. The more subtle version of that type of boundary violation or a type of boundary violation using this house analogy would be if someone knocked on your door and you said, sure, I, I welcome you into my home. Thank you for coming in and have a seat on my couch. And then that person starts analyzing and criticizing the things that are going on inside of your house. They might say, gosh, that artwork is so ugly. Or what is that smell? It smells terrible in here. Or they decide that you've invited them into the living room and that all of a sudden means that now they can go into your kitchen, open up your refrigerator and start eating your food or go into your bedroom and lay down in your bed. Uh, I think that that there are times that we invite people into our lives and we try to set boundaries, emotional, psychological boundaries, even those physical boundaries we talked about where we say, it's okay for you to do this, but that doesn't mean that it's also okay for you to do this. So that is when we might say, actually, I, I'm happy that we're friends. I'm happy that you're here and that we're hanging out, but I also really would appreciate it if you wouldn't criticize my art or I would appreciate it if you wouldn't criticize the way that I'm parenting or the food that I'm eating or so on and so forth. So keep in mind, um, you always have the right to set a boundary, whether it is a firm boundary of letting someone in at all, or it is a boundary that is more subtle and it is someone that you want to have a relationship with or want to have an interaction with, but you don't necessarily um, want them to go as deep or you don't want to be as vulnerable as you could be. So also keep in mind, this analogy is really helpful for thinking about relationships in general. So I think many of us have been afraid to leave our houses. We've been afraid to open ourselves up, to leave that safe space, and then make an effort to connect with another person. And this is actually really important for maintaining friendships, maintaining relationships in general. You have to leave your house and go across the street and knock on your neighbor's door to sometimes communicate to them that you care about them, that you're interested in them, that you are willing to enter into their house, enter into getting to know them, enter into or inviting them to be vulnerable with you and that you are a safe person. Also that you're a safe person and that if you knock on their, on their door and they say, no thanks, you respect that. You don't bust down the door. You say, I understand. And if you want, you want to hang out, you want to talk, you want to interact with me, then you know where I live, you can come by. Or I understand, I respect your wish, and maybe I'll come by again tomorrow and see how you're feeling. So these are really good um, analogies for understanding relationships. I think a lot of us kind of forget that we have to nurture our relationships and we have to go out of our house and we have to knock on other people's doors. So I hope that this analogy of living in a house and thinking about our boundaries similar to walls and you know doors and windows and various rooms is helpful. If you guys have any thoughts, please share them. Keep in mind, Lightheart Associates is available to you guys. If you are needing any kind of support these days, our therapists are all taking new clients. And uh, keep in mind also that this is general psychological advice, human advice. This is not a therapeutic relationship, so I am not speaking to any one particular person, just a whole bunch of you. Anyway, thanks a lot for listening, guys, and I will see you next time. Thank you.